Good morning. Um, this could very well be the first in a series of online services that, that Stone Church will offer to you, the members of our community. Um, I don't know how many of these we're going to offer because honestly, I don't know how long this, this particular crisis is going to last and no one does. I will say that this is not perfect. I wish we could all sit together as a Christian family, as a family of faith, as members of the body of Christ, as members of Stone Church, and share our lives in common, but we can't. So this is a very poor substitute for the real thing. And I don't think we should ever forget that this is a poor substitute for the real thing. If there's one lesson that this whole crisis is teaching me, it's that human beings weren't meant to live their lives online. We, we weren't meant to live our lives in cyberspace. We were meant to live our lives with one another. And maybe that's one of the many things we can learn from this particular situation that we're all in. So with that in mind, maybe that's a good opportunity for me to segue into the first part of our, our, our service, which is a time of confession. So given the fact that you're alone and maybe you have more time on your hands than you ever have before, I invite you to just pause for a minute. You can, in fact, you can even pause the screen if you need to. And I want you to just think back on the last week. Better yet, think back on the last year. Think about the areas in your life where you are in particular need of God's mercy, of God's grace, of God's healing, of God's forgiveness. Think about the unique ways in which you are broken. When you've had a chance to reflect and think upon these things, I invite you to join me in the words of the General Confession. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So the uh, format of the service is going to be relatively simple. Um, we're going to read a passage of scripture soon. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to um, go get your Bibles. Uh, Cora Lee will be reading from the NIV. Um, John chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. John chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. I, I welcome you to read this passage of scripture. Um, and uh, afterwards, Cora Lee has some very insightful and relevant things to say about it. After that, we'll enjoy a time of prayer together. And Michael has graciously uh, offered to lead us in worship with a song. Um, and then I'll close the service with a blessing. But, but thank you so much. For, for clicking on this link and for being a part of the service, I do strongly encourage you to um, continue until the end before you, you move on with your days. Thank you. The Gospel according to John, chapter 9. As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. 
Go, he told him. Wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they demanded. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it now that he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he is of age, ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, you are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What, are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, 
you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of Christ. As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The message translation reads Jesus' response this way. Jesus said, you are asking the wrong question. There's no such cause effect here. Look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me, working while the sun shines. As long as I am in the world, I am this world's light. So right away, Jesus dispels the idea that there is always a direct, a direct connection between sin and sickness. And Jesus often refers to himself as the light of the world. John, in his prologue, says, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Our gospel il reading illustrates this very well. Jesus brings light and life to a man who has known nothing but darkness. Physical darkness, having been born blind, and described by the Pharisees as steeped in sin from birth, also a spiritual darkness. But Jesus heals him. This surely is a cause for celebration. Instead, it seems that those around him are still very much in the dark. A cloud of fear and hostility overshadows this whole event. Some of his neighbors are curious, but confused. The Pharisees and Jewish leaders, who, who are the authorities of the day, are outraged by another Sabbath healing, and they're also a little afraid of Jesus' growing popularity. And the man's parents are afraid of the authorities and refuse to take their son's side. However, the man who is healed has the courage to stand through all this. All the interrogation, the repeated questions, if anything, they've given him time and opportunity to process everything that's happened. Every time he answers a question, he goes a little further spiritually. And his spiritual vision actually is clarified. He goes from saying, the man Jesus, to he's a prophet, to he's a man from God. Nevertheless, by the time they're finished with him, he must be feeling pretty battered. Jesus hears what has happened and seeks him out. The man is in a vulnerable state. He knows he was blind and now he can see. But he feels abandoned. Jesus asks him a direct question. And it's a question that calls for a response. Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he responds, he speaks it out loud, and this is important because when we say something out loud, it becomes real in our lives. It, it takes on a whole different power. And so his response, Lord, I believe, opens his heart and soul to worship Jesus. Fear is a powerful emotion. And everyone in this passage seems afraid for one reason or another. We must never underestimate the power it can have over people. Fear of what we don't understand, fear of losing control over a situation, 
like the one we're in right now with the coronavirus. It can cause us to be anxious and agitated and perhaps even cause us to doubt our faith. But Jesus is in the circumstances. And he asks us the question, do you believe in the Son of Man? Do you trust me? And how we answer that question can turn our eyes away from the darkness of anxiety and concern and toward his light. Jesus is the light of the world. He was there when God spoke light into darkness at creation. And soon we will walk through Holy Week when Jesus defeated the darkness of death on the cross. We will celebrate Easter and the resurrection life in one way or another. Jesus sent his Holy Spirit that, so that we would always have light in our darkness. Let's welcome the light of Christ into this global crisis, into our souls, into our hearts, and allow him to dispel the shadows of worry and anxiety as he walks us through this time of darkness. With God, there is no social distancing. He wants us to draw close. So let's continue to pray, support one another in ways that are safe, and look at this as an opportunity, as Jesus said, to look for what God can do. Then praise and worship him, and to God be the glory. Amen. I would invite you to join me in singing instruments of worship, and the words will be on the screen. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you respond, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people as we cry out to you. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion on us and all your creation. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, giver of life. 
and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We pray for a swift end to COVID-19, for those infected, for those who have been exposed, for those who care for them. Grant them strength, healing, and protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our churches, and we thank you for our Bishop David and our clergy. Grant them discernment and creativity to lead and minister in these exceptional circumstances. We thank you for the technology that keeps us connected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for leaders of nations. Grant them sound minds, courage, and humility. And we pray for citizens, communities, that they will take seriously the self-isolation and other restrictions as a way to slow this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for physicians, nurses, technologists, researchers, administrators, nursing home directors, pastoral care workers, and staff, all other health care employees around the world. We give you thanks for them, for those who are on the front lines of this virus. We pray, Lord, that you will grant them strength by your life-giving spirit and the wisdom and resources to do the work before them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are alone and isolated, grant them a sense of your nearness and love. Show us ways that we can safely reach out to them and to one another and to remain connected as the family of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, during this time of uncertainty and fear, let your face shine upon us, grant us your peace. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this particular act of worship. Even though we weren't able to be physically present together in the same place, we were at least present with one another in our common act of worship, common act of praise, we were present with one another in spirit, and I suppose that's, that's better than nothing, given the circumstances. Now, this would not be a real church service if we didn't have announcements, so I'm going to make a couple of announcements right now. Uh, number one, if you want to give Jasmine and I a call, our phone number is in the email that you would have received with this particular link. So if you want to chat sometime, if you're feeling lonely, um, if you're feeling bored, uh, if the isolation is really, get, really getting to you, then I, I would gladly um, chat with you over the phone. Same thing with Jasmine. As a matter of fact, we've managed to give a few of you a call already to just reach out to you. One of the, uh, the questions that's been asked is, how can we continue to give to the church in light of the circumstances? Um, there is also a link in this email that you received uh, to Canada Helps. Um, you could donate through Canada Helps. That would be a good way of continuing your offering to the church. Um, so really, that's it. Uh, I, I wish you a blessed week, and I wish you all the best in these very unusual circumstances. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you all and bring you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.